Two Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast. The Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast. Yes, we're about to get all up into this. It is the WWE Hell's in a Cell Predictions Podcast for the Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast today. I'm about to hop into the full preview. Everything I'm on Periscope right now. You can find me on Periscope at Two Sweet P-O-D. Find me on YouTube. OMG Space Corey Space B. I'm right there. You'll see me pop right up. And also on Castbox, find me at the Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast on Castbox. So I'm on Periscope right now. Every time I get on Periscope, there's lighting issues. So please work with me on that one. I'll see how I can get around that in the future. But we're about to hop into these predictions. Feel free to follow me. Periscope, YouTube, wherever you get your product from. Twitter as well. I know everybody's on Twitter. So, at 2 Sweet Pod and at OMG Corey B. You can find me there. So, we're about to hop into this thing right now. SmackDown Tag Team Championship on the line. New Day versus Rusev. This is quite the interesting match. I expect a really good match. Rusev and uh, Aiden English won their way into the Tag Team Title match against the bar last Tuesday on SmackDown. It, that was a phenomenal match. These are what I would call three great workers in the ring, and Aiden English is a really good worker as well, so I expect this to be a phenomenal match as well. I am very much looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a phenomenal match. At the end of the day, but knew they just won the titles. So... As much as I would love to see Rusev and Aiden English get the tag titles, because it's looking like Rusev is going to go nowhere anyways, as much as I would love to see those guys get the titles, I'm going to have to roll with the New Day to retain here to continue to be your SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I would love if Gallows and Anderson got involved in this and they got in the tag team title hunt going into next month. We'll see... What the next storyline will be going forward. Next up, we got the World Tag Team Championships on the line. Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. We've been enthralled in Seth Rollins versus Ziggler versus McIntyre and now Ambrose for quite some months now. I had no idea that it would lead to the Tag Team Championships. I figured that Dolph Ziggler would face off against Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental Championship and we'd have some kind of grudge match between Drew McIntyre and Dean Ambrose. Turns out that it didn't play out like that. Uh, it's seeming like, and I have this problem with Raw, it's seeming like nobody else is important on Raw outside of these four guys in Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. That can be a problem for the rest of the roster because the show gets boring outside of those guys. So... We have also the Intercontinental Championship locked up in this feud as well. It won't be defended on the pay-per-view. I don't like that whatsoever. So we have the tag team titles on the line. And at the end of the day, it's going to be a phenomenal match. I'm very much looking forward to it. This could very well be the match of the night. Who knows, depending on how much time that they give it. As for the winner, I am definitely... This is one of my more confident picks of the night. We will have new tag team champions. I think they are really going to go with this shield thing and give the tag titles to Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. How long will they have them? I have no idea. It will tie up the Intercontinental Championship. They will totally book themselves in a corner if they go down that route. So I really do believe they're going to go down that route. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose will be your new tag team champions on Raw. I'm interested to see how that plays out. We have all the titles hooked up into this feud. And I want to see how they play this thing out going forward. Next up, we have Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella versus The Miz and Maurice Mixed Tag Match. And I got to say that I'm meh about this feud. You no, know, it started off pretty hot. Brie Bella came running down, decked the Miz, decked Maurice, and it was on from there. We had the match made. And ever since then, the build has been kind of meh because Brie Bella has been on Raw. And, like, what is she? Is she, like, Raw and SmackDown like John Cena and The Undertaker is? So, I mean, the build itself 
looking at Daniel Bryan and The Miz, they are always gold in the ring. As for what we got on the most recent episode on SmackDown, like, what was that? Like, that was supposed to be Brie Bella versus Maurice, and it was like, they might as well have done a segment. Like I said on my SmackDown review, they might as well have done a segment if they was going to do all of that. So I was very much not interested in that main event match slash segment that they had going on. I asked for the match itself. Is this the moment where Daniel Bryan gets his quote unquote revenge on the Miz? One, I would love to think that they would save that all the way towards a WrestleMania, but I think we're going to get Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. I think they're going to get the victory here over the Miz and Maurice. And that will set up another match with Daniel Bryan versus the Miz going forward. So, is after that we have Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton held in the cell match. I'm very nervous here. Because we have Jeff Hardy and... We have a sale. I'm going to get to that later. But the build to Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton has been spectacular. I have loved every bit of it. And all the way, going back all the way to when Randy Orton appeared out of nowhere and was just doing whatever he was doing. That creepy thing he was doing to Jeff Hardy's ear. Ah, Got to get it out of my mind. But the build has been great. Jeff Hardy, when Jeff Hardy fought back against Randy Orton, I loved every bit of it. I thought that was phenomenal. I loved it. And we have the match here. So, Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. Will it be a great match? I'm not entirely sure. Jeff Hardy is going to do something crazy. Just like, can somebody start a please don't jump Jeff chant before the match? Because knowing Jeff, like we all do, he's going to do something. He's in a cell. He's in a cage. He's going to do something and jump off of something and do something Daredevil-ish. And uh, I really don't like him doing that to, at this point in his career. But as for the match itself, looking towards the winner, Randy Orton just came back, or you know, just made that reappearance, shall I say, in the feud with Jeff Hardy. So I'm going to have to go with Randy Orton here for him to... Maintain momentum with that character that he has going that sick character that he's playing right now. He really needs some, to maintain his momentum with this win. I think he's going to get it versus Jeff Hardy. And I think it's going to be a well enough match. I don't expect it to be a great match or a really good match. I just expect it to be done well enough. So moving on, we have the Raw Women's title on the line. Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss. And this is quite interesting. Their match at SummerSlam was a joke. Just a downright joke. And I don't know what was going on in that match to this day. Ronda Rousey was talking. She know they had a no seller choke hold. And I don't know. I'm just gonna stick to the build here going forward. This has been an uninteresting build heading into Hell in the Cell. Like I said on my raw review, this feels like the placeholder match to Alexa Bliss and Trish Stratus and Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella at Evolution. So this match is just caught in between in the middle and every week we've gotten some type of Natalia versus uh, Alexa Bliss or Natalia versus Alicia Fox with Ronda Rousey and Alexa Bliss sprinkled in and it's just been really repetitive. And the build, I don't know, I haven't been interested in it. As for the match itself, looking at the result, Ronda Rousey is going to win here. That's not even in question. As for the quality of the match, I have no idea what the quality of the match is going to be, given what we saw at SummerSlam. It just wasn't good at all. So I'm wishing them the best, but I'm not expecting much as far as the quality of the match goes. So... Moving on, we have Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. And look, Beck's wins are we riot. Doggone it, it is Becky Lynch's time. She is arguably the most overstar on SmackDown. Some might say the most overstar in WWE. The crowd just loves her. 
She's basically the sting of WWE where the crowd just won't boo her. You can t- try to turn her heel all you want. We will not boo Becky Lynch because we love her. This has been arguably, and I won't even say arguably, this has been the best build going into Hell in the Cell. And it's all because WWE is doing it backwards. They want Becky Lynch to be heel, but the crowd is just eating it up. I'm eating up every bit of this as well. We got Hero Becky Lynch, but it's a great TV to see her beat down Charlotte Flair. So I'm very much invested into this storyline. Uh, best friends going at it. Not going to be inside the cell. Going to be a singles match. But the match should be fine enough. And look, WWE, just get it right. Just put the title on Becky Lynch. I don't want to hear no if ands, or buts about it. This is what the fans want to see. This is what should happen. Whether we want to see it or not, this should be the result. Becky Lynch should win here. They've been telling the story for like months of Becky Lynch. I even call Becky Lynch the Cleveland Browns, playfully. I call her the Cleveland Browns of WWE for quite some time. Because we were waiting on her to get a win. Waiting on her to get a win. And we were like, okay, this is going to be the win here. And look, we've been waiting on it. So give it to us, WWE. Becky Lynch for the win for the title. Next up, we have AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. And this has been a phenomenal build as well, no pun intended. Quite a weird build as well with Samoa Joe and the going after going after Wendy. <laughs> hey Wendy! So this has been quite the strange build as well. But most recently on SmackDown, I love the empty arena promo and I love the story time with Samoa Joe. That was done really well. And these guys have phenomenal chemistry, whether it be on the mic or whether it be in the ring. We saw their most recent match. It was just phenomenal at SummerSlam and well done as well. Hopefully we get a desired result. We get a straight and forward result, not a DQ, not a count out. I want a real result here. And at the end of the day, Samoa Joe needs to win this title. He cannot come out of this feud without the title. Because at this point, look, we've been putting some more Joe on the edge, on the edge, on the edge. We had him with Brock Lesnar on the edge. We had him with Roman Reigns on the edge. They didn't jump with some more Joe. We need to jump with him here. You need to put the title on him here. And he needs to be your SmackDown Heavyweight Championship. And I, champion, excuse me. And I think they will finally go with some more Joe as champion. And... Maybe we'll get another match out of this. AJ Styles gets his automatic rematch. We get another match out of this. And it should be phenomenal as well. So last up we have the Universal Championship on the line. Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. And this build has just taken a turn for the worse. Because face Braun Strowman versus... Roman Reigns, I was down for. It was something that I was very much interested in coming out of SummerSlam. Thought we was going to get that. We was going to get that the whole fall. And I pretty much thought it was going to be phenomenal. But then we turn around and now we have Hill Braun Strowman who's like not interesting to me. I don't find him interesting because the crowd wants to cheer him. It feels like a very forced heel turn from Braun Strowman. I don't know if you want to say that that's to elevate Roman Reigns as a face. That is a very relatable point because that's the only thing that makes sense at this point. You put all that momentum into Braun only to turn him heel for what reason? That's the only thing I could come up with. But I think this build has lost momentum because of it. Because... I'm just not sold on Braun as a heel. And, I mean, going forward with this build, there's been some interesting things to happen. They've gone back and forth with it. But, I'm just not interested in in this match as I once was. As for the winner, this is my, my most clear pick of the night. Roman Reigns is winning this match. Look, at the time where when Braun Strowman turned heel, I was like, well, that's it. Braun's going to lose this match and fade off into oblivion and that's just such a shame they put so much work and momentum into this guy only to have him fade off and at the end of the day he's gonna lose this match and that's such a shame we're gonna have 
they're gonna have their big shield moment where the shield holds all the titles and i don't understand for what for who for why but that's how it's gonna go down seth and dean is gonna have the intercontinental and tag titles and roman reigns is gonna have a universal championship and wherever they go with it from there i have no idea roman reigns wins here he retains the universal championship let me know your thoughts on that on the cell. Let me know your predictions down below, whether it be on YouTube, Twitter, anywhere. Let me know. That is episode 33 of the Two Sweet Wrestling Podcast. Out!